Merry Christmas. And welcome to Our Lady of the Lake on the Feast of the Holy Family. Before we get Mass, we need to review our health and safety precautions. Face coverings are required at all times. They must be worn over your nose and mouth. Please stay six feet away from members of other households whenever possible. We will not hold hands during the Our Father, and the sign of peace will not be observed at this time. If you brought hand sanitizer, please use it before communion. An usher will dismiss your row for communion. We ask that everyone comes forward so that no one needs to climb over anyone else in the pews. As you make your way forward, use the marks on the floor to maintain social distance in line. When you get to the front of the line, stand six feet away from the minister, respond Amen, remove your face covering, and then come forward to receive communion. You may not receive communion in a gloved hand. If you are not receiving communion, please cross your arms over your chest and the minister will give you a blessing. Please put your face covering back on before returning to your seat. And is there anyone that needs a low or gluten-free host? No. Thank you for your patience and cooperation. And now please stand and join in singing our opening hymn, Angels We Have Heard on High. Feast of the Holy Family 
as a reminder that the Incarnation brought the Word of God to Earth, truly good, and all things would sin. We celebrate that fact, that the Word of God became human. As we begin our prayer, as always, we say, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. In Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life as our last. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. I will make reward very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what good will your gifts be if I keep on being childless and have as my heir the steward of my house, Eliza? Abram continued, See, you have given me no offspring, so no one of my servants will be my heir. 
Then the word of the Lord came to him, No, that one shall not be your heir. Your own issue shall be your heir. The Lord took Abram outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars if you can. Just so he added, Shall your descendants be? Abram put his faith in the Lord, who credited it to him as an act of righteousness. The Lord took note of Sarah as he had said he would, and did for her as he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the time set that God had stated. Abraham gave the name Isaac to his son, of his whom Sarah bore him. The Word of the Lord. Psalm 128 proclaims, O blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in His ways. Descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and as countless as the sands on the seashore. By faith, Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises was ready to offer his only son, of whom it was said, Through Isaac, descendants shall bear your name. He reasoned that God was able to raise even from the dead, and he received Isaac back as a symbol. The word of the Lord. Oh, man. 
of you have the text, I'll be reading the shorter version today. Uh, liturgically, we'll come back to the longer version uh, February 2nd. Today we emphasize the Holy Thing. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. When the days were completed for their purification, According to the law of Moses, they took him up to Jerusalem, there to present him to the Lord. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. Now the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. As we read in the first two lessons of our scripture readings today, uh, the narratives about Isaac, the, the reading from Genesis and also St. Paul's reflection, it really relies upon that statement that nothing is impossible with God. And if you recall, maybe not, but if you do, at the time of the angels, angel Gabriel's visit to Mary, she went, after she received the word from the angel, she went to meet with Elizabeth. And Elizabeth was elderly, and she was preparing to give birth to John the Baptist. And that passage of the Gospel points out, nothing is impossible with God. As we take that to mind today in our prayer, I would suggest that we look at the Holy Family as a, a triad, Jesus, Mary, Joseph. As we do that, I would like, I would hope we could do it, if we could include a second triad in that thought, about Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, the Holy Family. And the second triad is you, your mother, your father. Now it sounds like it's really a stretch in time. Maybe we don't like to associate it right away, but give it a little thought sometime. That in the Gospels we have very few details about how the Holy Family lived in Nazareth. Very few details about the younger days of Jesus, those days between the birth of Bethlehem and when they lost him in the temple as a teenager, and details about those years when he informed his mom and dad that he had to be about his father's business that, that time that he was lost and found in the temple until his public life. We don't have a lot of details. But we've got details about our own mom and dad and our life, haven't we? And do you think there's a whole lot of difference? How do we suppose that Jesus grew in that house with Mary? Joseph, his parents. You think Jesus got up on time every day? You think he was a perfect carpenter? Joseph was trying to teach him this and that, probably. Did he always come home on time? Well, we don't really know, but we know we didn't. We know how 
mom and dad had to sort of watch out for us, watch after us, correct us, discipline us. And how about the teen years? After Jesus had born, after Jesus had born, Jesus, uh, Mary and Joseph, you know, I wasn't lost. You all came up here to the temple and you brought me with you. And I got involved with the, you know, the personnel here at the temple. You went home without me. Who's fault was that? Here's your mind. Well, I don't, I, did you ever say that to your mom and dad <laughs> when you got lost at the mall? Well, you lost me, I told you. <laughs> Whatever. But Jesus had to grow. He was human. And that, that I think is one of the important lessons of the theological uh, doctrine that we hold that the Word of God became flesh. He became human. And if we in our thoughts and prayers trying to go deeper into that relationship, that the reason he became human was to be our Redeemer. He was really and truly to fulfill that role of Messiah that had been predicted and wished for for so many years beforehand. To be what Mary and Joseph had learned in their study of the scriptures, their family life, before the actual birth of Jesus. And how that came about. Mary learned through a message of an angel. Was she expecting that? I doubt it. Do you really think she got the program that when you go to prayer today, Mary, an angel's going to visit? It had to be a surprise. And Joseph, learning that it was okay to take Mary, she had been a spouse to him. They were planning to get married, but he found out she was pregnant. Then a dream of all things. And we know that dreams, you know, they don't just come out of thin air. Joseph had been thinking about that. Joseph had been trying to figure out what was going to be the proper uh, decision. And in a dream, he learned that he would be foster father of the incarnate word of God. Think of our own entrance into the world. Setting brothers and sisters aside for just a few minutes, and we, we never really do. Our siblings are so important in our lives. But think of the relationship with your mother and father. You really didn't know what was going on when you came into the world, mom and dad. You know, it was a miracle for them. But they brought you to life. Do you know what family life was like in your house? There were challenges. There were joys. There were festivals. There were times when relatives would come. There were weddings and funerals. There were times when we had to learn lessons that we didn't really want to. Mom and Dad made it happen. Now indeed we know that some of our families have been visited by tragedies. Some, you know, are, have been uh, putting greater responsibilities on one or the other of our parents. But in principle, let's remember that the Holy Family came into this world to bring the Word incarnate into the human existence. Scripture doesn't give us a lot of details, but if we can recognize that to be human, to be the, the son of a loving mother, to be the son of a caring father, is family life. More than likely, our lives are much more like Jesus' growth in Nazareth than we would you know, wonder.
parallel. I pray with you today that we can keep our families in mind with a sense of thanksgiving, with a sense of appreciation that our parts in that family are very, very real. And we pray in thanksgiving for where we are today. Because here we are. It's not going to change much because, you know, this is what's happened in our homes and in our lives, our relationships. And so we pray, I hope, in thanksgiving. We pray for our moms and dads. And we surely pray for ourselves that we can recognize how important we are to each of them. Sometimes expressed, sometimes not. But we are very, very much an object of love. I'd like to share with you just a few words. It's a prayer that was written by Mother Teresa of Calcutta. And she is quoted as saying, Heavenly Father, you have given us the model of life in the Holy Family of Nazareth. Help us, O oh loving Father, to make our family another Nazareth, where love, peace, and joy reign. May it be deeply contemplative, intensely Eucharistic, revived with joy. Help us to stay together in joy and sorrow in family prayer. Teach us to see Jesus in the members of our families, especially in their distressing disguise. May the Eucharistic heart of Jesus make our hearts humble, like His, and help us to carry on our family duties in holy ways. May we love one another as God loves each one of us, more and more each day. And forgive each other's faults as you forgive our sins. Help us, O loving Father, to take whatever you give and to give whatever you take with a smile. There's the clincher. Loving Father, Take whatever you give, uh, help us to take whatever you give, and to give whatever you take with a big smile. Hopefully we can do that. Hopefully we can honor the Holy Family by giving thanks for who each of us is. The object of the love, mother and father, who have brought us into this world, to be imitators of the Word incarnate. Please join me now. <clears throat> Let's call to mind our creed. <clears throat> Let us stand together and say, I believe in one God, the Father.
On today's Feast of the Holy Family, let us together turn to God with our prayer for our families, for ourselves, and for all families around the world. For the Church, that we may look to the Holy Family as a model of devotion to and love of each other, we pray to the Lord. For government leaders, may they recognize families as the fundamental building block of society and seek to enact policies and programs that support and strengthen family life. We pray to the Lord. For those who are without family, who have lost their families or are estranged from their families, that they may find consolation in being children of God and part of God's holy family. We pray to the Lord. Lord, and for our faith community, may we continue to help families grow in their knowledge and love of the Lord and answer the call to holiness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, for Bob and Louise Madrinsky, all who have died, may they receive your place at the eternal banquet in heaven. We pray to the Lord. For all our prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions, spoken and unspoken, we pray to the Lord. Father in heaven, in your goodness we pray you hear our prayers for our families, hear all the prayers that they offer for us this day. Help us always to serve one another. For we ask in Christ our Lord. Amen.
We ask in Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of this awful mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in ours. Begotten before all ages, he has begun to exist. So that raising up uh, in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call strain humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. So with angels we praise you in joyful celebration we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper finished, he took the chalice. Once again, giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples. And he said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Chalice of salvation, 
We give you thanks that you hold us worthy to be in your presence. Minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, with David, our Bishop, with all the clergy and religions, and with all of those who serve your people, with all your people, wherever they may be. Remember too our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Remember all who have died in your mercy and welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles and the Martyrs, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life, we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity with the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Since you speak of peace, all the more must you have peace in your hearts. Let no one be provoked to anger or scandal by you, but may they be drawn to peace and goodwill, to kindness and concord through your gentleness. We have been called to heal wounds, to bring together what has fallen apart, and to bring home those who have lost their way. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not at our sin, but look at the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all.
Behold him, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Happy those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord,
The Word of God has appeared on the earth. He has lived among us. Let us pray. Bring those who refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family. So that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever. We pray in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Christmas time is only just beginning. Our parish is providing free resources to help you celebrate the octave and the whole liturgical season, including a Christmas playlist from our Director of Sacred Music. Blessings prayers, family activities, and more. Visit lanecatholic.org or the welcome desk to learn more. Our parents
parish's virtual Christmas cards are now available to watch on our website and Facebook page. Thank you to everyone who sent in a video message. Please help us share this video greeting with as many parishioners as possible, especially those who are home-based, self-isolating, or in assisted living facilities. The bishops of Michigan have released a statement regarding the morality of COVID-19 vaccines. Please visit grdiocese.org or our parish website to read the statement. The Knights of Columbus are sponsoring a poster contest for children and youth. The theme is Keep Christ in Christmas, and the deadline for submission is December 31st. Learn more online or at the welcome desk. And once our Mass is over, an usher will dismiss you row by row, beginning at the back. Please exit in a timely manner, since staff need to clean the pews immediately following Mass. We encourage you to visit with other parishioners after Mass, but please do so outside the building while maintaining social distance. There's a podium in the narthex where you can drop your offering. You can also give to our parish at our website, visit via text message, or through the email. Please dispose of your worship aid in one of the bins on the tables in the narthex. Thank you once again for joining our Mass. The Lord be with you. And the Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I do wish you uh, a Merry Christmas a couple days after, and a Happy New Year a couple days before. And I truly hope that um, we're anticipating a um, good day. I like the, the Christmas carol, God rest ye merry, uh, happy. Everyone, let nothing you dismay. Well, okay. <laughs> Remember Christ the Lord, born on Christmas Day. Christ makes a difference in our lives. If we can put that to practice, I think that smile that Mother uh, Teresa was talking about might it might work. And so our task is ended. Let us go in peace, to love, to serve our God. Thanks be to God. Let you be going out first today. I'll follow you behind. I'm slow. Please join us in our closing hymn, Joy to the World. Hi.